joining us for the webinar on celebrating life at work in partnership with OC Tenor. I'm Ritu from People Matters and before telling you about today's agenda, let me give you a brief about today's topic. Our long service awards are passing. Employers spend most of their working hours at work. They share, relate, learn, grow and problem solve with those they work with every day. That's why when a team member reaches a career milestone, more than a time for a company to present an award. It's a time for celebration among the colleagues and peers themselves. Whether it's a symbolic award or an award of failure, celebrating life at work is an epitome of employee engagement. In this one-hour webinar session, we will cover the key points and uncover tools that can help your organization achieve its business goals. We have the privilege of having with us Kevin M. Director, OC Tenor Institute. Kevin has been in this role for more than 20 years. Kevin has successfully coached employees in some of the world's biggest organizations, including Coca-Cola and American Express. Now he helps clients discover how recognition trends in companies, team building, personal development, and leadership skills. A partner for today's webinar is OC Tenor. OC Tenor is number 14th on on the 2015 Fortune 100 Best Companies to Work For develops strategic employee recognition and reward solutions that helps people accomplish and appreciate great work to achieve bottom line business results for more than 85 years. OC Tenor serves 8,000 plus clients in 150 countries and delivers 4.2 million awards to 19 million users worldwide annually. OC Tenor leads the recognition industry in, re in researching and sharing insights around the universal human need through OC Tenor Institute to create value and appreciate it. We have saved time for you to ask questions at the end of the webinar. For those watching the live session, you can submit your questions anytime during the presentation through the Q&A section. We will try to respond as many questions as time allows. We have a full exciting agenda for today's webinar. So without any further delay, I'm going to hand over the microphone to Kevin. Over to you, Kevin. Thank you very much and greetings, everyone. It's a pleasure to welcome you to uh, this webinar and I'm excited to spend the next hour with you talking about the concept of appreciating people. At OC Tanner, we had a great founder back in 1927, Obert Clark Tanner. A lot of people ask us, what is the OC all about in your name? And it's just simply Obert's initials. And Mr. Tanner established our organization on the foundation of the appreciation of people, essentially shining a spotlight on who they are, on the great work that they do from day to day, and on their loyalty and their contribution over time. And he focused us on the concept of connection, forming partnerships with other great organizations to help establish inside of them cultures of appreciation and performance. And we really want both inside of our organizations. We want to have a culture where people feel valued and appreciated, where their contributions are really being looked at and called out. But we also need production. We need productivity. We need to achieve results or what we refer to as great work. And with great work, you get the kind of work that makes a difference that other people love. Truly, that kind of work delivers value that people truly value and appreciate when they receive it. And we have several different opportunities to communicate or speak to this idea of great work. The first one is, we have the opportunity to educate our people around the idea, to teach them what great work is and really how to do it our way, according to the culture we have at our particular organization. But the other three abilities that we have to communicate are really naturally occurring opportunities to convey our appreciation through meaningful and purposeful moments of recognition. And I'd like to make that distinction very quickly. The understanding that the appreciation of someone is different than recognizing them. A lot of times we talk about creating recognition programs or launching 
recognition efforts inside of our organization, but we really don't do that. What we're trying to establish is a culture where people feel appreciated and where we express appreciation through moments of recognition. Recognition is nothing more than the vehicle that we use to convey our appreciation for something. And we have three naturally occurring events that allow us to convey our appreciation through meaningful moments of recognition. The first is when people are applying effort towards getting results. When we encourage effort towards certain results, we really are fueling those daily value creating activities. When we notice someone's effort and we offer praise for the effort, not a reward for it, but when we offer praise for their effort, we in really give them the ability to sustain their energy and their momentum towards the achievement of results. So the first naturally occurring opportunity for us to convey appreciation through a meaningful moment of recognition is through effort, the application of effort and our opportunity to encourage that. The second naturally occurring opportunity is when people achieve results that align with our values. Now we are starting to focus on outcomes that drive results. We reward results to make sure people really understand that our organization values the great work that they're doing and the results they're achieving and the contributions they make. So the second natural occurring event is when they achieve a result, we want to reward those. Those are two very specific things that have to do with people's performance on a day-to-day -day basis and topics that we speak to on other occasions. But the third naturally arising opportunity to convey our appreciation to our people in a more holistic way in this particular case is when we celebrate a career milestone. And fortunately, those occur all the way throughout a natural career. Really, it begins before they actually start with our organization. We should already be doing things to welcome them in properly, to attract talent, and then to start to develop that talent when they arrive. We should celebrate at the end of that first day, which really begins a dynamic first year with the organization. We know that a lot of employees, if not most, make the decision to stay for a period of time with an organization in the first early months or first year of that uh, experience they're having with the new company. So this opportunity for us to celebrate career milestones is critical. It really gives us the ability to sustain performance over a career. It generates loyalty and contribution over time, and that's really what we're looking for. So the opportunity to speak to that today is really a lot of fun for me. And the question that we ask people all over the world when we go into certain industries, cultures, and countries is, are people staying? Are people really lasting? Are they building tenure at particular organizations? And what we find, again, in various industries and various companies and various cultures and, and certainly in various uh, different kinds of, of situations is over the last 20 to 25 years, again, in many cases, tenure has been going up, which is contrary to what the media has been telling us throughout those years. What's happening in the last two or three years is really quite interesting. As the millennials are making their way into the dominant position in our workplace, we're starting to see a little bit of change there. We're starting to see tenure drop just a little bit as they come in and, and they have the sense that they need to move around and adjust to be successful. Uh, I think it's as, as, re as recent as yesterday in, in the newspapers uh, in India, we actually had some numbers suggesting that tenure is down by about 50% from a decade ago. And we're seeing that, in, again, in certain industries, certain cultures, certain countries are seeing that take place now. Between 2012 and 2015, we're starting to see those kind of numbers. So as an organization, knowing that those kind of things are going to happen, and they happen in cycles, clearly, but as we go through that down cycle a little bit, is there something that we can do that will have an impact on retention, on tenure, on keeping people around. And the question is, what is the return on investment relative to service award programs, and what is the impact that it can have? And I think it will be interesting for you to see. When you look at a particular industry or a particular country or culture again, and let's say that the average tenure for organizations that do not celebrate careers, that do not have service awards, is 4.7 years, which is accurate in some of the countries that we deal with. What happens is if you add a service award program, if you have a program that celebrates careers, 
really at any level, uh, any quality level at all, you can add two additional years of tenure. Now, that's a powerful message. I was on the phone with the CEO one day. We were having a conversation about whether or not his organization wanted to adopt a truly effective appreciation program into their culture and, and see what the impact might be. And as we talked about these numbers from our research with our friends at Cicero, the CEO paused for a, a couple of minutes. And when you're on the phone with the CEO and they pause for a couple of minutes, that can be scary a little bit. But when he came back on the phone, he said, so let me get this straight. As he was, he was working through some numbers at his own desk, he said, if I apply the concept of appreciating careers in, in our culture, we can see up to two years of tenure growth inside of that culture. He, says that he, he, he then told us that if he could just get two more months of tenure on average in his organization, that would easily meet the, the investment cost for the program that we were discussing. So he knew what the numbers were, and to have another two years available to us is, is really significant. Here's what else we found from the research that was really impressive. If your service award, if your career celebration is highly effective, you can add four more years of tenure in that space. That's a lot of addition. So the opportunity to add six months, a year, year and a half, or two years, even up to four years of tenure by employing the concept of appreciation, giving people a sense of value and the contributions they're making is is significant and something that really you should make a note of because here's the opportunity for us as an organization to really have an impact on what's happening with tenure. And I think we'll see that opportunity grow over the next few years as we start to deal with the millennial group. How will we create the kind of environment that inspires them to produce great work on our behalf and also inspires them to stay? and build careers. We firmly believe that people will build a career with the right organization, but you're going to have to have the right environment and all the right elements so that the culture is a vibrant culture where people at the organization love what they do, they love who they do it with, and they love who they do it for. If we build the right kind of places, people will stay and work for us for a long time. Now, the service program inside your organization should have objectives, and we want to talk about six specific objectives that should be on your mind when you think about celebrating career milestones and along that path. And these six objectives are just six among dozens that you might come up with on your own, but let's talk about the six that we've identified that are powerful, that are really impacting companies today. When you have a moment of recognition around a career milestone, you appreciate the influence that that individual has by honoring a person's impact on their peers, on the customers of the business, and on the business over time. What we're actually doing is suggesting that because they are there, because of the work that they're doing and the impact they're having, it's really making a difference on the people that work with them and around them, again, on the customers that are receiving the unique brand experience that we want to deliver as an organization, and again, certainly on the business over time. So know that when we have a highly effective career celebration path, we really appreciate the influence that the individual has, and it makes a difference in their life. The second objective is to build trust. And trust is built by giving leaders a chance to show they notice talents and career contributions. Here we have the opportunity for a leader to speak to in very specific ways, what the contributions of that individual have been. What is it that's really made a difference? What kind of work have they done? When an individual hears a leader speak with great specificity about the quality of their work and some stories around what kind of work they've done and some of the things they've done to represent the organization, it is deeply meaningful. What's interesting is it is not just meaningful to the recipient, to the employee, but it actually becomes meaningful to the manager and to the leaders that are speaking to that employee and to the people that are watching the event when you have it in public, which is how it really should be done in the best case. So two things are happening. We're appreciating the influence the individual has. Now we're establishing trust with our leaders by giving them an opportunity to speak effectively to the work and the contributions of the individual. Third, we retain talent, exactly what we're talking about. 
by using the pivotal time of a career anniversary to reinforce the decision to stay. We talked with one executive in one organization who talked about his five-year anniversary, and he talked about waking up on a cold winter morning, getting into a very old uh, Volkswagen Rabbit, I think was the car he described. It was an old beat-up vehicle at the time. He had a young family, just five years out of business school, and he's driving into his work where he has worked for all five years since graduating from school. As he's driving in, he starts asking himself a question, thinking about this five-year anniversary day. He starts to wonder if he should have stayed at this organization that long. That's certainly not what they taught him in business school. There, they told him to get out, to look for opportunity, to move around, and to grow. Yet, he's come out of school and built this little family and created obligations and stayed at this particular organization for five years. And now he's starting to have doubts in his mind as he drives into work and into the parking lot. And he pulls in and he parks the car and walks in. He's wondering if he should rethink his priorities and possibly make changes to advance his career. Interestingly, when he arrives and gets inside the building, his manager is prepared for his five-year anniversary, has gathered the team and members of his department and members of the leadership team of the organization together. And they launch into about a 20-minute celebration of his five-year anniversary. Leaders and peers speak to what has happened in that time, the contributions that he's made over that period of time. And it is really an invigorating experience. And at the end of that, he gets the opportunity to talk back to them and express his gratitude for things that they have done together. The cumulative effect of the experience causes him to go back to his desk and reflect on his drive in that morning with the concept of maybe looking for change. By the time he thinks about it midday, he's decided, you know, this is really a pretty good place. These are really pretty good people. I think I'm going to stay here for a little while and just see how things go. Now, remember, that was a five-year anniversary. Seventeen years later, he is the executive vice president of that company. He has authored a book that is a New York Times bestseller for the organization and made significant contributions to the culture. Had there not been a five-year anniversary celebration waiting for him that morning, who knows where he would have ended up? Would he have left, written that book, and made those contributions for a competitor or another organization altogether? Perhaps. But we have the opportunity through this concept of conveying appreciation meaningful moments of recognition to impact the decisions our people make about tenure, about staying with our organization. The next objective is that we inspire our peers. We inspire the people we work with. And our peers includes everyone in the organization, not just other employees, but at all levels. We do this by encouraging team members to strive for a career, quote unquote, like that. What we mean is, as we observe certain kinds of career celebration presentations, and hear all of the great things that those individuals have done and the impact they've had on their organization, people start to get a sense inside themselves that they would like to hear some of those things said about them as well. When they arrive at a key milestone, they would like to know that they've made those kind of contributions. In other words, as they watch that event take place, they get the sense that, wow, I would like to have a career like that. It causes them to rethink the level of work they produce for the organization, the level of engagement that they have with the mission, and vision, and values of that organization. It really has a powerful effect on a lot of things, not the least of which is our peers that observe them. Next, we start to shape culture by sharing personal stories that illustrate what your organization is made of. There's a great story in a sales force of one particular organization that uh, happened to be back in the Chicago area in the United States. And they had a very critical presentation, sales presentation. This particular individual was a young sales representative, uh, really determined to have an impact and land a, a huge account that was in a nearby city. And they needed to fly into that appointment the next morning and be prepared to deliver it midday. But a huge winter storm had hit, and flights had been canceled, and he was not going to have the opportunity to make that flight and to get to that city. So that evening, he bundled up, packed up his car, and hit the road for a seven-and-a-half-hour drive to get to the other city to make the presentation. So impressed 
was the other organization with his effort to get there. And his organization was really one of the small players in the bidding process. They were so impressed with his effort that they moved him into the finals in making that decision, and he made great progress towards the sale and the, the achievement of acquiring that account. We tell stories like that because we want people to understand what our culture is all about. At our office, we had a really interesting thing happen not too long ago. We are in Salt Lake City, Utah, about five hours away by car from Las Vegas, Nevada, and I'm sure most of you have heard of Las Vegas. There's a large convention being held there, and we had the contract to provide some really great awards for an organization, but they had made some last-minute changes, and we were trying to meet the needs of those changes, and because of the, the changes that have been made and the challenge of producing the awards, we had missed the opportunity to FedEx those and get them there by plane uh, with the shipment in the morning. So one of our employees just simply got on the phone, booked an, a flight immediately, and took a box full of awards, got on the flight, flew to Las Vegas, delivered them right to the hotel in time to be handed out at the, at the ceremony, got right back on a plane and flew back. You tell stories like that because they represent the kind of people you have in your culture and the kind of culture that you have in fact. It is a powerful thing that we can do to influence what the organization stands for and how it feels. But stories are a critical element, and we have great opportunities when we have a career celebration to tell the stories about our people as we celebrate them. Finally, we strengthen loyalty to the organization by extending our reach outside of just the formal organization, involving family and friends in that career celebration, in some cases, inviting them to attend uh, the occasion. In other ways, we get it out through social media now and other ways to involve people in that, in that celebration. One of our uh, well-tenured, can I say, uh, employees, been with the organization about 35 years, was celebrating that particular uh, anniversary, and we had encouraged him to use Facebook to, to really put that information out on Facebook and let everybody that, that knows him and that associates him with, with him on Facebook, uh, let them know what was going on. And he was a little shy about that. He wasn't a big Facebook or social media user, but he allowed us to put the announcement out. He told us a few days later he had received literally hundreds of responses from people that he hadn't heard from since elementary and junior high and high school days. People from all over the world that he had come to meet through business and other things were congratulating him on his tenure and on the company that he worked for. So you strengthen your loyalty when you have those kind of deeply meaningful experiences for people. I think it's important as you think about how to apply this in your organization that you have objectives. These are some that you can learn from, that you can take a look at and implement into your structure, and certainly there are others that you can add to this. But be clear, we have some control over the outcomes with our employees. We can provide the inspiration that causes them to choose to engage with us and to produce great work on our behalf, and also inspires them to stay with us over long periods of time. We have to take advantage of those opportunities, conveying our appreciation at critical career milestones is one of the way we do that, one of the ways we do that. One of the things that arose out of our extensive research on this topic was that careers have stages, and each particular stage has meaning. I'm sure you would agree with me that you were different at five years old than you were at 15 years old, or again at 25 years old. And in much the same way, we discovered that careers have stages as well, and people feel differently at year one than they do at year five or year 15. So we went out and really gleaned a lot of information from several cultures to determine what that meant and how people were feeling. It's important as an organization that we know about these stages because it gives us the ability to speak to those people in very clear ways that, that really connect to the message that they want to hear. For example, at year one, what the people told us from the interviews were, it made it that they felt like they had made it through the learning curve of that first year. They felt like now that they were adding value, they were establishing some pride in their first year accomplishments, but they still felt like they were a bit of a sponge, still soaking up <coughs> information along the way. Interestingly, we know that a large percentage of people, again, make decisions to stay with our organization during that first year. So as we pay attention to onboarding, we have to know that we're going to have natural occurring career celebration opportunities 
from the first day they come to work all the way through that first year and from the first year and beyond. We have to make sure that we are celebrating our people along the way, first day, first month. Build a process where we pay attention to what's happening with our people. It really matters. What our five-year people told us, and again, this is in most every culture, is that at five years, there's a level of expertise, if you will, becoming confident in that expertise. They've sacrificed a lot to become an expert, beginning to really add value, uh, or to uh, really value the relationships they have with the coworkers, a sense of possible home at this particular organization. Sometimes uh, the research will reveal to us that people are making final decisions about a lifetime career somewhere between year five and 10. So that's the time when they're getting quite serious about making that decision. It's interesting that year five seems to be a pivotal time for people to ask the question about whether they want to stay or should they move. It's interesting that it doesn't happen at year four and a half or year six and a half. It seems to happen right at that five year phase. If we have taken care of our people properly, if they have a deep sense of well-being, they will make the decision to stay with us. If they don't, it's possible that they would make the decision to make a change at that stage. At year 15, they feel differently yet. Now they're invested, feeling settled, balancing work and their personal life comfortably. They've invested significantly in building a history with the company. They're beginning to see lifelong value from the partnership, proud of the contributions that they make. Many of you probably are experiencing that level now. I have watched 15-year veterans in an organization battle back and forth with a CEO because the 15-year veteran knows they know what they're talking about and they defend their position strongly because they feel that comfortable with what they've achieved and who they are. We've identified in every culture that year 25 is the big one. That's the one where people want to pay the most attention. It's the most significant milestone. It's the accumulation and effect of all the others. Beyond 25 years, people tell us that they want to leave a legacy. They've started to change from climbing the corporate ladder, if you will, to wanting to leave the place better than they found it. Uh, it's a time for celebrating victories that are past and present, but it's a very significant time. It's a time to really pay attention to that career. What's interesting is, is the impact that this has on, on what we call the whole person experience. I wanna be clear about what happens inside of organizations with compensation and benefits versus a mixture of appreciation and, and authentic recognition. With compensation and benefits, you get employee satisfaction. In effect, you acquire the left side of the brain and the body, the tactical side of the, of the individual. They'll do assignments, they'll check their boxes, they'll throw that work over the wall. But we haven't necessarily captured their imagination, their creativity, their engagement, if you will. And that happens when we capture the right side of the brain and its connection to the heart and the passion associated with producing great work. We have shown through years of research that appreciation has the greatest impact on that achievement, on the whole person, on reaching deep into the meaning inside their heart about what they do and bringing that passion out to the front. That's what engagement really is all about. We've heard that term employee engagement for a long time. A lot of organizations think it's, it's a destination for that organization, but I'm going to suggest to you that it is not, in fact, an organizational destination, but rather is an individual decision that's made one heart and one mind at a time by our people. To engage with the mission, vision, and values, purpose of our organization and produce great work on its behalf, or in many cases, they choose not to engage. And sadly, in many of those cases, they stay and work for the organization for some time, producing indifferent quality work, work that doesn't necessarily make a difference that other people love. It's important that we understand the impact of appreciation, that we understand why it should be executed beautifully, elegantly, but very consistently over time. And it's really important that we understand the power of career celebrations because it accomplishes things that other kinds of recognition doesn't even accomplish. And it has a powerful influence on loyalty and long-term contribution inside the organization. It's important that you understand the stages. Now there's some best practice communication, and again, O.C. Tanner is leading the industry as we have done for about 87 years now, with really creating dynamic communication inside of the organization. And the way that we have been doing that most recently is through something called yearbook. And yearbook relates back to those school days when we actually had yearbooks that we shared with our friends. And really, this is no different. 
In some companies, service awards are lonely or isolated experiences. What Yearbook does is it allows leaders and friends to create a memorable printed or online keepsake that's filled with photos, filled with stories and, and uh, various kinds of feedback actually in writing, but even videos on uh, our, our online version that celebrate a person's life at work. It's our fastest growing product ever. It is really changing what's happening inside organizations in a dynamic way. And what makes it so fun is its personal nature because what we're actually doing is loading into that yearbook very personal things. Again, photographs, personal comments from peers and leaders of all kinds. We, we put that in print. There's a book that can actually be signed and shared and taken home, and people really love that piece. But there's also an online version that helps us share more and more comments. Part of that yearbook has a contribution from the leader of the organization. And note that it is a personal contribution. It's not generic. It's not the same thing everyone receives. In this case, congratulations, Kelly, on your five-year anniversary with OSCO Energy. It's a personal message speaking to the stage they're at and making it something that is going to be valued by that individual. What we have found out through the research is that 90% of our recipients find the, their leader's message to be deeply meaningful. So it's important that they receive one. 94% of recipients consider their yearbook a keepsake. It's changing the game and the way that they feel about the celebration of their careers. Comments connect. 66% of yearbook recipients with comments felt more connected to their leader. If you're a leader and you want to get a deeper sense of connection with your people, if you want to deepen your relationship and get a greater sense of well-being established with them, this is one of the ways to do that. 67% of yearbook recipients with comments felt more connected to the organization as well. Both powerful things because we're trying to establish that connection. So comments are critical. They come in in the form of little, little short phrases or little congratulation notes. Again, there's uploading of pictures of all kinds to celebrate what that employee has done. It's fun and entertaining moments. And on the online version, you actually have video where we can go in there and actually speak to our people about what's going on in their career and what's happened. With our online version that accompanies the hard copy, you can actually have endless comments. However many, if a thousand people write in to comment about your anniversary, you have the capacity to have all, and store all of that. And it's a great place to go uh, down the road. In the future, you can always go to those and have a look at them. And they're always uplifting. It's always great to find out that you've made a contribution with people and really making a difference. Yearbook is exciting. It has the wow factor that Robert, one of our HR vice presidents, one of our clients talked about. He simply said nothing else met our expectations. Yearbook is what we wanted for our employees. What's interesting is, is as we develop this, it's, it's getting international. We currently have 14 languages working on uh, hundreds to, to try to get that, that met and to get into every place we go, 150 countries. The focus now is to spread it all over the world because the reaction to yearbook is just phenomenal. Everything that we expected it to be and more. It's important to know that it is a customized piece. It could be customized to fit your particular needs or you can select something from our design, but they're intended to communicate what matters most to your organization, to meet you where you are, to really articulate what this organization is all about at its core, in its soul, right? What is the purpose? Why is it that we exist in addition to making money? What is the unique brand experience that we're wanting to deliver out to our people? Well, we have the opportunity to speak to some of those values when we have this yearbook celebration and really embed them into the heart and mind of our people. It's exciting. Additionally, we push those out to social media. Why? Because we want to share them with the world. We want to share them with everyone that's associated with your life. And as we all know, social media is really the place where people communicate now, and it's an opportunity for us to really see what's going on out there and then congratulate each other on the achievements that we have. A 20-year anniversary of an organization is a big deal, and it's fun to hear from some of our friends and associates around that idea. In addition to this yearbook experience, there are some things that go with it that enhance that experience. And our research tells us that three fundamental things are necessary for a person ultimately to feel recognition is deeply meaningful and highly effective for them. The first is the experience of the moment itself. What kind of moment takes place in the celebration? Second. There is a symbol that is representative, something that ultimately sits on the desk, on the mantle, on a shelf, sits somewhere within sight 
that reminds them of the achievements and reminds them of the experience that they had. And there's also that, that premium brand that, that people are going to use on a daily basis that also reminds them of what they've achieved and that experience, the moment they had that was celebrated. These three things show up as the most important and essential elements in any meaningful recognition moment. And it's important that we pay attention to those because it is the presentation of the whole event that's critical. The idea is that it should be beautifully done. It should be an elegant experience. It should be deeply meaningful. Now, the concept of presentation goes beyond that. <coughs> Excuse me. One of the most important things is how they experience the moment itself. And I want to speak to the experience a little bit with a story about Michael Padilla, who is celebrating, and it might surprise you, his 20th year with his organization. Looks pretty young for 20 years to me. But he's celebrating his 20-year anniversary with the organization. And in this organization, they spend about a half an hour celebrating a career at 20 years. And they invite literally anyone in the organization that's had any touch with that particular individual to attend that. In advance, the manager has been given notice two months and one month in advance to make invitations for people to speak and to participate. So at this occasion, there's going to be leaders there and executives there and peers there and family members there that will help celebrate this particular moment. In Michael's case, he's invited his family in. That's his wife, his daughter, and his son. Now, just imagine for a minute trying to get your teenage children to attend dad's recognition moment at the company. i got to believe that would be like pulling teeth just a little bit, wouldn't it? And yet, when you look at the face of that young man watching one of Michael's associates, in this case on video, but others are standing around them, talking about the contributions that Michael has made, not just to the company, but to their, their lives as well as a friend and an associate. Look at the, the look on the face. It's almost disbelief. I, I know that a lot of teenagers simply look at their, at their parents and their father maybe in particular as a walking wallet, perhaps. But now suddenly they're, they're seeing that, wow, he actually has a life away from us. This is really who he is when he goes out into the world and he's in his workspace. Look at the things he's doing. That's got to create pride in that particular individual. But it also has to have some degree of inspiration, doesn't it, in the hearts and minds of those teenagers to suggest that, wow, what a great example of what really maybe I want to accomplish in my life as well. What's interesting about this particular occasion was when Michael finally received his symbolic award from the CEO of the organization, he was then handed the microphone. And Michael is an emotional individual anyway. And so it was taking him a couple of seconds to kind of gather himself. And when it came his turn to speak, or he, it looked like he was going to speak, he paused one more time and he took a step back towards that couch, that sofa where his family was sitting. And he said to them, after a half an hour of hearing all about himself, he said, you know, I do all of this for you. What a poignant moment. Where else can something like that happen? Only here. Only in that kind of a celebration moment can something like that take place. We talked earlier about the impact on peers. And as you have various members of the organization and family there to observe what's going on, to hear the messages of celebration, they do get a sense that that's the kind of thing they want to happen to them as well. They want to have ultimately an experience like that that is rewarding and satisfying and that inspires them to really do great work themselves. I want to stress to you that it's important that we truly understand the values here. We understand that there are naturally occurring opportunities inside of every, every organization to convey our appreciation to our people. When they're applying effort, we can come in and encourage that effort, provide direction to it. We can notice it when it's effective. We can praise it. That sustains energy and momentum over time. It gives them the impetus to keep going towards results. When a, a result is achieved, that is another naturally occurring opportunity to convey our appreciation through a meaningful and purposeful moment of recognition, to celebrate that achievement and its connection to the brand values of the organization, the unique brand experience that we want to deliver out to our customers. It just absolutely instills in people a sense of validation and affirmation. It validates their worth today. It gives them a sense of confidence and confidence associated with their work. 
but it also affirms their potential in the future to do more with their work. It inspires them to continue to go. But that third element, that opportunity to celebrate careers, goes beyond just celebrating performance. It says that we, we appreciate not just a piece of great work, but we appreciate the person themselves, the whole person, the whole body of work. This is the kind of inspiration that isn't achieved in any other way. If we want to have the kind of environment that gives life to a dynamic and vibrant culture, a community of people, again, who love what they do, who love who they do it with, and love who they do it for, we want to apply these principles of recognition to that. And one of the key ones that we really want to understand are all of the phases associated with career celebration as we go forward. It's an absolute pleasure to spend this time with you and present these principles to you. I know that we have the opportunity to interact a little bit uh, and maybe address a couple of questions along the way, and we have a few minutes of opportunity to do that. So let me thank you for spending some time listening to the information. I encourage you to, to reach out to us to get more detail on the research and the application of these principles. Love to talk to you more about those. I'm uh, happy to take some time to answer questions at this stage. Uh, thank you so much, Kevin, for uh, presenting this wonderful session. Yes, uh, we have definitely received some questions from the audiences. So our first question is from Richa. She, uh, her question is, how do we ensure 100% genuine feedback from colleagues while appreciating influence for long service awards? So I, sorry, the phone kind of broke up halfway through that. Can you go through that a little bit slower for me? Yes. So uh, the question is, how do we ensure 100% genuine feedback from colleagues while appreciating influence for long service award? So how do we ensure that we get feedback? Yes. Is the question. What we do is we provide an opportunity. That's part of the culture development. We have to communicate with our people about what these events are all about and what the opportunities associated with those are all about. But we send out communication to people. We let them know what's coming up in advance. So in other words, at my organization, uh, a couple of months before a significant anniversary of mine, there would actually be a reminder sent out to key people that I'm related to or I'm associated with, and my leader uh, controls that, that reminds them that it's time for, for Kevin's fifth year anniversary, let's say. And they then have the opportunity to go in and submit those comments, to upload pictures, to create video that can go into that. But it's really based on communication. We help organizations establish communication so that everyone understands what the process is and how to participate with it uh, to make sure that happens. Does that answer that question? Did I get that right? Uh, yes, uh, definitely, Kevin. Thank you so much for answering this. Our uh, next question is from Varsha. She's asking what kind of celebration we can do in order to make our employees feel like a part of family. Yeah, it's an interesting concept that, that the question about what kind, some of that is influenced a little bit by culture, right? Because we have different sensibilities in different cultures. For example, when I do work in the, the United Kingdom, they are a little bit more reserved there. They've been raised to not draw attention to themselves, where in other parts of the world, certainly United States and uh, age parts of Asia, uh, there are places where the celebration is critical, and, and we want to have that in front of a team and with leaders associated with it. But we have to be clear to, about understanding what is the personal nuances associated with the individual. What kind of celebration makes the most sense to them, is the most meaningful to them? Now, we should have a good sense of, of how to conduct a good recognition moment. And again, we help organizations really learn how to to construct and carry out these moments in highly effective ways in all cultures. But we can have a theme associated with our particular company, our industry, or our, our culture, uh, even our country, the nuances associated with that. But we have the opportunity as an organization to create the kind of moments we want. Let's get feedback from our people, especially as a manager. With the members of your team, you should know them well enough to know what kinds of recognition and what size would they get nervous in front of 100 people? Do they not want to do that? Is, is five or 10 the right number? We've got to kind of know the individual a little bit to help construct that. But a lot of the work that we do is, is to help companies really understand how to execute these moments in excellent and beautiful ways. 
थैंक यू केविन आर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज वन ऑफ पार्टिसिपेंट वॉन्ट टू नो द नंबर विच यू हैव शेयर विद अस सीम्स टू बी मोर यूनिवर्सल रिकमेंडेशन सो द डेटा इज मोर लुक्स लाइक यू एस सेंट्रिक विल इट वर्क इन एशिया इज वेल it does work in asia in fact yeah it's interesting the 10 year numbers are different there in fact uh, across asia the 10 year numbers are are 8 years uh, when there's a service organization that or a service program that's highly effective it jumps up to about 9.1 there uh generally and again in the last couple of years now we're starting to see that trend fall back just a little bit because the young people are in fact choosing to to move and make changes so the examples in the presentation are just to give you a sense of Uh, of what numbers are but when we talk about uh, the the numbers of people when we talk about uh, appreciation uh, you know the 90% of people that value the leader comments that's coming globally that's worldwide that's uh, none of this is centric just to the united states so the numbers are are truly global we work with uh, people in every country uh, to glean that information but as, as we work on as we kind of just are opening now uh, the business of india and really getting deep into that culture we are focused heavily on the research there and shortly we'll have a lot more extensive research specific to to the country of india thank you thank you kevin for answering this one our next question is what are the success metrics for uh, the service awards in an organization but by metric are we talking about what what years and what stages not sure i'm clear yes. on, on what metric is being referred to if we're talking about the years and the stages again we get to determine that largely as an organization but we recommend uh, certain things along the way that there should be several moments of recognition in that first year and then as a consistent flow through a program we should recognize at the first year we recommend again at the third year in a formal way you should recognize every career anniversary but in formal ways the first year the third year the fifth year and every five years thereafter uh, until they reach retirement and even beyond if you decided to if we you try to encourage those retirees to come back and mentor and provide value but if that's the metric you're referring to we kind of suggest that and then you have maybe team level celebrations of the in between years year 2 year 4 etc should be done by the manager maybe with the team but a little more formal uh, at year 1 year 3 year 5 because we're getting them off to a great start establishing a relationship and then about every 5 years seems about right for most organizations and cultures thereafter uh thanks kevin our next question is how much impact does the culture take for celebrations in employees life for a start it takes time to build a brand in the culture so how uh, it impact make an impact in startups so the question the question is how does this impact the development of culture and brand is that is that accurate yes yes exactly yes. and i apologize for asking the questions with the phone connection sometimes doesn't hold up. Uh the impact this has on on culture is is that idea of personal engagement. You know, we've heard that concept of employee engagement for a long time. And frankly, as I mentioned, it's been misunderstood. And employee engagement is a decision that that one individual makes when they start to feel a sense of opportunity and a sense of well-being at their organization, then they start to choose to engage with that organization to really produce great work on its behalf. Globally, the research is clear. Appreciation has a greater impact on employee engagement than anything else. It's actually not even close. That that is the thing that people want more than anything else. When we conducted recent surveys, we asked people and it was unseated. They didn't know the reason for the question at all, but when employees were asked, what would could your manager or your organization do that would cause you to want to produce great work 37% an enormous number said recognize me that was the largest number by a distance some of the other answers were inspire me and give me autonomy and freedom to do my work and train me you know provide training so those are some of the top answers but the largest answer by far was this concept of recognition it just simply instills in people a sense of opportunity What does that mean? I have an opportunity at this organization to grow and develop both personally and professionally and a deep sense of well-being. I know that this organization and my specific leader cares about my well-being. Understands that I have a whole life, not just here at work, but I have a whole life, a rich life around this work, and they enable me 
to fulfill that life. And that's what creates that sense of well-being. And appreciation just simply has the greatest impact on that. And it, and it tends to uh, kind of soften up the defensive walls that we often have uh, with, as individuals. And we tend to turn on our receptors, if you will. We become more open to information and inspiration as we feel appreciated and as we know that we're making contributions and as that becomes validated. So recognition is just a key to, to really flipping the switch with people, causing them to want to engage. And when you have enough people inside of your organization make that decision, you might refer to that as critical mass, where, where a certain percentage gets into that frame of mind, that starts to impact the entire rest of the organization and will inspire other people, in fact, uh, to go further and, and engage themselves. It has a tremendous pack, uh, impact on brand and culture. Uh, thanks, Kevin. That's very helpful. So uh, would you like to share some example related to career celebration? I, I, think this, I think what you want to think about when you think about a career celebration moment is allow some time for it. Allow 15 or 20 minutes. Some organizations do a half an hour especially as the tenure grows and develops. In the moment, if, if it's a, a one-year, three-year, a five-year, that's probably at a team or a department level where you do that. You gather a group of people together. You have leaders of that individual at various levels there to speak. You have some peers there, a limited number, a smaller group than you would have at, say, year 15 or 20. A smaller group, smaller group of participants, but you can invite as many people as you want, but it's probably a little bit smaller. And the moment is simply someone is in control of the moment. Someone introduces the employee, talks about the year of tenure that they've achieved, does some introductory uh, elements relative to who they've been and how long, you know, what, what's the impact they've had. And then that the individual will introduce other speakers that will in turn speak to the values and the contributions of that individual. That should be a 10 or 15 minute at least experience, year one, year three, it should grow at year five. Uh, at year 10 and beyond, it should be a really significant moment, I think 20 to 30 minutes, which probably feels like a long time, but it goes very quickly because you've got people telling great stories and emotional stories and, and it's really fun. But do it in a setting that's comfortable, uh, where there's room for people to relax and enjoy the moment, where everyone can hear the people that are speaking and where everyone has an opportunity when that's concluded to interact with the individual and congratulate as well. It's, it's just an opportunity to create a very special moment. And of course, at the end of that, uh, we make presentations uh, of the awards, perhaps the tangible gift that they've ordered for that uh, specific thing, and then they get an opportunity to speak as well. So there's just a few things you wanna pay attention to uh, when, you, when you create those moments. And again, we have a lot more information that can help you with that. Uh, thanks, Kevin. Nidhi from Kothro wants to know, uh, how do you identify what needs to be appreciated? Do you appreciate an employee for everything or any specific job or activities? Yeah, it's a great question because we get asked that all the time. So someone would ask me sometimes, are, are you going to convey appreciation for the person coming to work that morning? And of course, that's not the idea. But if they come to work every morning for a couple of years without ever missing, that's probably a moment you want to recognize. Keep in mind that, that what we pay attention to is effort and results that connect back to values. So when we see people putting forth effort or achieving results that connect to one of the values of the organization or is really delivering a difference to another employee or to a customer that really makes a difference that that person loves and values, we are going to recognize those things because what we're saying is we as an organization and me as a leader, we actually value that effort and we value these results and we value you as a person. With the career celebration, we're saying we value all of the things that you've done that are like that. In the career celebration, we get the opportunity to speak to perhaps dozens uh, but certainly handfuls of or experiences that that particular employee has had producing great work for the organization, some wonderful stories about things that they've done. We don't recognize every single thing, but we pay attention to those things that truly create value, that connect back to our mission and vision, our purpose statements, and, and really make that difference. And, and it doesn't take long before you start to become a connoisseur of great work, if that makes sense. It's like appreciating art or a fine wine. 
you start to get a sense of what's right. Now, it takes some practice and it takes some education. That's why we've written books and we uh, provide websites and blogs and all kinds of information to help you learn what we're looking for and how to celebrate it when you see it. There's, again, we have a lot of information about that, but the answer is not everything, but things that really connect to value and moments that are really significant when we see them. Uh, so we are receiving lot many questions, Kevin. So I'm moving to the next question, which is how do we balance between recognizing performance and tenure? So sometimes the situation can be the person is completing five years, but maybe having a performance, uh, current performance issue. So will the appreciation give a, a confusing message for the person? I don't think it does if it's done correctly, but this is something that comes up all the time. So because they've arrived at a certain position in the company, uh, and, and yet perhaps we're going through some difficult conversations and some performance issues with them, we still have that, that I think it's an obligation, but we should, we should not view it as an obligation. We have an opportunity to have a positive moment with that individual right in the middle of all of this other stuff that's going on. We have found that successful recognition moments have been the catalyst for change. People have changed their behaviors dramatically because of what they experience in a recognition moment, more than the experience they had in a corrective conversation or a series of goals or a program for correction. So we can separate the challenges that we're having from the moment of recognition for their loyalty and the contributions they have made. So let's look back over that five years, and even if we're going through some struggles right now, let's speak to some of the good things that we have seen and some of the good qualities that we have seen in that person. Let's celebrate that moment and try to bring those things to the forefront because often it really has a powerful experience. We're going to be a little bit more careful with that particular celebration to not suggest that we are approving things that shouldn't be approved and we're not exaggerating contributions, but we should speak honestly to authentic achievements that they've made and contributions that they've made to the company because there will be some. But again, that's a great question because it calls out this idea that we're not going to be artificial about this and suddenly act like everything is fine, but we are going to suggest that five years, there have been some things that are valuable that are worth celebrating. We do appreciate the fact that you're here and it really is a statement that the organization is behind them until there comes a time when there has to be some kind of separation perhaps. But until there is, they're part of the team, they're part of the family, and we are gonna celebrate that tenure and speak to some of the good things that they've done. Thank you, Kevin. So let's move to our last question. Uh, it is, large organization cannot have individual uh, celebration program. In such case, what is your recommendation with respect to celebration keeping needs in mind? When we have large organizations, global organizations, uh, you, you run into the challenges associated with, with having offices everywhere. You have people that are not necessarily online uh, that, you know, to get all of the, we have a lot of interesting challenges associated with that. But we also have opportunities there and there's, there's ways to create programs where the theme is still present and the opportunity comes up. There have been times when we have outlying workers and we've had to do things on the phone or on a, a WebEx or in some other way where we, but, but there's really almost no excuse left with technology where we can't bring a group of people together for a celebration. Uh, it creates a few more challenges here and there, but as an organization, we can have a theme to that. Our culture should, should be thematic. We should have a concept of how we do it, and then we look for the right kinds of opportunities in outlying areas and with difficult settings, and, I, and I, we've seen every single kind. We've seen the, the most difficult scenarios you can imagine with global companies, but keep in mind that you want to focus on having a theme, that you really want to understand and you want leaders and managers particularly to understand how to do it well, and then we have to try to meet the needs of the challenge. If they're an outlier, we've got to find a way uh, to get some, some people involved in that experience or create a kind of an experience that really matters to them. Again, we don't have the kind of time on this particular format to, to go deep on those, but we have just a lot of information about how to create those moments uh, in difficult global situations, which is, is really most of what we deal with all the time, so, so it's a real challenge. Let me say too, it, it, I know that uh, we're at our time and, and we're at the end of the questions, but I've appreciated your patience. 
uh, again, with the phone glitches and just understanding the questions a little bit. So I hope I've answered those as close as possible to what they were intended. But uh, please give us the opportunity through our team in India and, and websites and other things to get the information to you that you really want. We have just a lot of information available that will enhance uh, all of this stuff that we've just introduced to you tonight. And that's all really today was about was the introduction of the ideas. Uh, reach out to us. We're happy to get other information to you as quickly as we can and, and really resolve some of the issues. But commit yourself to becoming an expert, to becoming a connoisseur of great work and somebody that really knows how to apply appreciation in the culture. Thank you so much, Kevin, for answering all our questions. So with this question and answer session, we are going to wrap up today's webinar. We once again thank our webinar partner, OC Tanner. And finally, our very special thanks to Kevin M., the speaker for this webinar, for his time and invaluable information that he has shared with us today. I would like to thank everybody in webinar audience for participating in today's session. We'll come back to you with many more that concludes today's webcast. Thank you and have a good day.